What's up everybody, it's Nick. And in today's video, we're gonna go over four ways to widen your sound. Now, although I'm using Ableton in this video, all these techniques are applicable in other DAWs. And let's begin with number one, the Haas effect or the precedence effect. The Haas effect was coined after Dr. Helmut Haas in 1949. He found that if one sound source was followed by a second sound source within around 40 milliseconds or less, our human ears would perceive it as a single sound source. So we can use this kind of psychoacoustic phenomenon in music production, and we can kind of trick our listeners into giving a wider sound. Let's see how we can actually set up a device for the Haas effect and see how we can use it in a musical setting. I have a work in progress here, and I'm gonna try to use the Haas effect to make the electric keyboard a little wider. So let's take a listen to it. There are several ways to set up the Haas effect, and one of the simplest ways is to use just a delay on a track. So we're going to take this delay, we're going to put it on the track here. I'm going to put it before my dynamic plugins. And by default, the delay is not going to give us the Haas effect, but again, we just have to adjust a few settings. So let's go to the sync option. And we actually want it to go to strictly time. And the other thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure the feedback is at 0%. We do want 100% dry wet. We also wanna turn off the filter, although you could turn that on later for some sound design choices. Uh, lastly, the most important part is to unlink the left and right. Now, this psychoacoustic phenomenon, it makes sense because when we are listening to a sound, we know that the sound waves are actually hitting our ears at a different point in time if it's definitely coming from around us to the left or to the right. So having a slight delay between the left and right is uh, what really kind of pulls off this effect. So we're gonna unlink the delay and I'm gonna take this down to one millisecond. And again, the 40 second threshold was around here. So let's listen to this. So without, without this Haas effect, and with it. So you can adjust the milliseconds to your taste. Uh, the other thing is, although there is one millisecond of delay time in the, say, non-delayed signal, we can always go to the delay here, the track, and kind of compensate that by putting negative one milliseconds so that we know that, in fact, the one signal is not delayed at all. We can also set up the Haas effect with an effect rack, which is just a group of effects. And what we'll do is we'll actually open the chain list here. We're going to right click and create two chains here. At this point, we're going to add a delay to one of the chains. So I'll just put it on the first one. We're going to call this one by command R. We can rename it delay. This one is going to be dry. And essentially, we're going to still have the left and right linked because we're going to actually pan this first chain all the way to the left, the second one to the right. We want 0% feedback. We want it on time. And we want around probably, I think like, again, 40 milliseconds or less. But I think a sweet spot is around like 15 milliseconds, 100% dry wet. And let's hear this now. We can also take the volume down a little bit to compensate the fact that there's two chains here. So I'm going to do negative three for each one. I also really like this method with the effect rack because then I can actually pan the left and right a little narrower. And I can also adjust the balance, the levels. So number two, the second way we can widen our sound is by using mid-side EQ. Now, mid-side EQ simply refers to EQ that processes the mid signal separately, independently from the side signal. And mid signal is defined when any stereo track has the same frequency information on both the left and right channel that's considered mid. And anything that's contrasting or differs on the left and right channel is considered side frequency information. So this technique allows us to boost 
the sides and get a kind of a perceived wider sound. Let's take a listen to this other work in progress I have. So in this case, I kind of want to take the uh, keyboard here and make it a little bit wider. One important thing to note with mid-side EQ is that you want to make sure you're working with a true stereo track. If your track is mono, then this is actually negates any of the effects you're going to put on with mid-side EQ. And I can actually visually see that the left and right are not the same, that we do have some stereo information that can be like maybe help us add to our width. So let's solo this. I'm going to put in a new EQ8. And to en enable mid-side EQ, we're going to simply just go to the right-hand side here. And we're going to go from mode to, well, we also have left and right option, but we're actually going to go to the mid-side here. We can toggle between the mid and side curves simply by this edit mode. And a good practice generally is to cut out the low frequencies on the side uh, because, you know, in general, we like to put our low frequency information closer to the center because our ears can't really perceive direction in the low uh, frequencies as well as we can do it in the high frequencies. For the side EQ, we can boost the mid and highs because that's where our brains can really perceive the spatial awareness. And we can solo uh, the bands here with this solo icon. So the third way we can widen our sound is by using panning automation. And while this might be obvious to some of you, I do think it gets overlooked quite a bit. Uh, so let's take a look at this work in progress. I've got some panning automation on this vocal that's been stretched out. When it comes to panning automation, you don't want to do it on a lot of your primary drums, although those rules can always be broken. Uh, I find it works best for effects, for transition sounds, and for kind of like really heavily sound design, something that you want to stick out. So this vocal kind of pans back and forth and intensifies as we get closer to the drop at measure 17. And uh, we can always pan. Let's see, I'm going to try to show you on this track, which is kind of this melodic. Like plucks, these plucks that come upwards. I'm going to show you how I would approach panning this. So you can always right click on the parameter, say show automation, and I'm going to do it in a new lane. And then we can expand this lane right here. Ableton, as well as other DAWs, have draw modes for automation. And so what we can do is highlight this chunk of time. I can then right click and insert a shape like this square. And what I'm going to do then is use these flex points, which are kind of hard to see, but I'm going to drag that in and compress it and then command duplicate it. So it's kind of going like this. Then I'm going to highlight all of this time. I'm going to use the bottom flex point to ramp it down here, this bottom corner to kind of give it a diagonal and maybe kind of bring it back downwards here and maybe a little bit diagonal there. The 
fourth way you can widen your sound is to use specialized plugins. And there are tons of plugins on the market. I'm just going to show you just a couple of my favorites. Micro Shift by Sound Toys is a great one. It, it gives you the ability to focus the kind of the shift or the delay that's happening to give that wideness to a specific frequency, which is really nice. And the kind of delay looseness versus tightness. So that's happening really on the high end right there. Ozone 8's imager is also amazing. Uh, what it allows us to do is separate four frequency bands and control the width of each band. And here's the line without those two plugins. You can even use plugins like Serum Effects, which essentially is just the effects rack from Serum. It's not the synth itself. But Hyperdimension is a great uh, tool to use on your tracks to kind of give it a wider feeling. So here's with Hyperdimension. There are so many other great plugins for widening your sound. Let us know in the comments which plugin you like using. So those were four ways to widen your sound. Again, that was first, pause effect, second, mid-side EQ, third, panning automation, and fourth, specialized plugins. Let us know your favorite technique in the comments. Please subscribe to our channel for more production videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time.